On the 24th of April, 2020, a violent ambush in Virunga National Park in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo killed 17 people, including 12 rangers. The attack was claimed by the FDLR, a group of Hutu who regularly target the ethnic Tutsi population. Tragically, this isn't the only militia group the region has to deal with. Local armed conflict is an ongoing issue in the area, dragging in Virunga, like many other national parks. But just how widespread is this problem? And what can human conflict mean for conservation? While Virunga has been in the headlines recently, armed conflict affects conservation all over the world. In fact, 80% of modern armed conflicts have occurred in biodiversity hotspots. Violence in and around conservation areas creates a negative downward spiral. With wildlife being killed by crossfire, tourism almost always decreases due to security concerns, meaning less income for local communities and conservation projects, and a decrease in law enforcement due to the lack of safety and visitors. This in turn makes illegal activities easier and causes wildlife to suffer even more. Several of the world's already endangered large mammals have been drastically affected by human conflict, including mountain gorillas in Central Africa, the jaguar in Central America, or snow leopards in Afghanistan and Kashmir. But although it's a global problem, Africa is the worst affected region by far. An estimated 70% of the continent's national parks have experienced armed conflict since the early 1900s. With the ongoing conflict that has killed an estimated 5.6 million people since 1994, the DRC is one of the most badly afflicted countries of all. Stretching from the Ruwenzori Mountains to the volcanic Virunga mountain range, Virunga National Park is in the eastern DRC, right on the border with Uganda and Rwanda. The park was first designated in 1925, making it the oldest protected area on the continent as well as the most biologically diverse. Among its many important species, Virunga is home to elephants, hippos, and even lions. But most notably, critically endangered great apes, mountain gorillas, and eastern chimpanzees. Virunga is hugely important to global conservation efforts, and tourism plays a vital role in sustaining the park's income. Almost a quarter of the $9 million that are needed every year to keep the park going comes from tourism. But recently, Virunga has been making headlines for the wrong reasons. In 2018, two British tourists were kidnapped in the park, and even though they were released unharmed, Virunga was forced to close for eight months due to security concerns. The fatal ambush in April this year was the worst in a long line of violent attacks that have killed more than 180 rangers since 1998. 700 armed rangers patrol the park on a daily basis, but militia groups operating in the region often see them as a threat and their lives are constantly in danger. The park is also rich in natural resources, which the government, militia groups, and external actors all compete for. The land itself and the wildlife that lives here become victims of these human conflicts, with animals like gorillas forced to flee deep into the forest as their habitat becomes under stress. It's a similar story in Garamba National Park, about 700 kilometers to the north of Virunga. Located on the border with South Sudan, Garamba is famous for being home to the world's last remaining population of Cordofan giraffes which currently numbers just 55 individuals. The giraffes and other large mammals like elephants, Ugandan cob, and the now extinct northern white rhinos used to be able to roam this area without fear. But the conflict and a porous border with South Sudan created severe problems for the park. 
Armed rebel groups, including the LRA, led by notorious Joseph Kony, have decimated wildlife populations through poaching. As illegal wildlife trade is an important source of income used to finance local conflict, militia groups cross in and out of the park, where they end up disturbing the habitats of endangered wildlife. In both national parks, the worry is that this is the start of the negative downward spiral we saw at the beginning. If security worsens, animals might lose their habitats and tourism could decrease, leading to a decline in conservation. Virunga is even being referred to as the most dangerous conservation project in the world these days. And with local conflict showing no signs of stopping, can the parks expect a positive future? One answer may lie elsewhere in Africa, where the positive story of Queen Elizabeth National Park could give protected areas like Virunga and Garamba more reason to hope. In neighboring Uganda, Queen Elizabeth National Park is now part of a conservation unit shared with Virunga. The park was established back in the 1950s and soon became one of Africa's top safari destinations. But the Uganda-Tanzania War of the late 1970s was a disaster for its wildlife. Amidst the turmoil of war, elephants, buffaloes, water bucks and hippos were being poached or hunted across the country, and the park was all but destroyed. Amazingly, only a couple of decades after its end, Queen Elizabeth National Park has been restored to its former glory. Major investment in conservation and a flourishing wildlife tourism industry have helped wildlife numbers to recover and created widespread stability around the park. Besides providing a safe haven for endangered chimpanzees, the park is famous for its huge flocks of birds and iconic tree-climbing lions. Now, thanks to conservation efforts, the park can be regarded as a Central African lion stronghold. Parks like the Queen Elizabeth show what is possible with a combination of government-level assistance and sustainable wildlife tourism. But first of all, a lot of work needs to be done to tackle the root causes of local armed conflict. And this is where conservation itself can actually help. With around 77% of DRC's population living in extreme poverty, some of the local conflict around Virunga and Garamba stems from economic instability. But with tourism from the parks providing jobs, improving infrastructure, and driving the local economy, there's been a gradual increase of stability and more support for conservation from neighboring communities. Escaping the effects of armed conflict isn't easy, and both Virunga and Garamba have a long road ahead. But these parks are demonstrating how dedicated conservation can be used to tackle underlying causes and help bring long-term stability to a region. No one can predict what the future will bring. But examples like this show that there is still hope that national parks across the world can be used as a positive force for change. Hey there. I hope this video could give you a better insight into the vital role of conservation projects in national parks for local communities. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing or turning the notifications on. There's much more coming up. In the meanwhile, I'd recommend you to have a look at our conservation playlist. There's a lot of insightful content in there.